Move to Windenburg they said. It's going to be fun they said. But no one said anything about the sex change that came with moving here. Look on the bright side, how pretty you are in mum's old dress. It shows off your, um, feminine assets really well. And I appreciate the freedom of leg movement, but it's still not something I want to get used to. You have no one to blame but yourself. And Grundy. That's what you get for messing around with my Salvadoradian skinwalker relic, and breaking it. I told you I'm sorry. Can't we just steal another one from the same museum the first one came from? Why bother, when there's a witch from Salvadorado in the magic community? Doesn't Vero have relics like that at her house? Yes, that's why Stel Maria has been trying to get in touch. It's in her own best interest, because she was affected by that last spell too, and she doesn't take kindly to being called Stel Mario by her nephew any longer. Or was it Stel Marcus? Yeah, she came by to ask about our progress with that angel doll just when Grande and I were using the relic, and somehow got mixed up in this mess. Guess I can consider myself lucky that we only switched sexes, not species as well, or I would be an alien lady right now. And who knows what I would have turned into if the relic had also taken Arya's bees into account when it decided to switch around various attributes at random. Not that there's anything wrong with switching species every once in a while. So what's the problem with Vero? She and Purple Shrek are both romp agents. Do they never see each other at work? Normally they do, but Vero hasn't shown up to work lately, and no one in the magic realm has seen her in days. Maybe she's sick. Or hiding at home from Shimizu-sama who keeps coming back to the magic realm to ask her questions about necromancy rituals. I'm beginning to think I shouldn't have introduced them. But she lives not far from the Pope Espoos. When we go see them tonight to finally get rid of a certain wraith problem, we might as well stop by Vero's house and borrow one of her relics. And if that doesn't work, we'll just have to come up with a new name for Leviathan. One that better suits his current appearance. How about... Lavina? How about no thanks? No way I'm staying like this. It's been a long week without my dick, even though Coatus with you has been fun. So I heard. You told your sister about our sex life, but you didn't make a video again, did you? No, I literally heard you last night. It may not look like it, but some walls in this house are thinner than your newly acquired hymen was for the five minutes you had it. What? Can walls really be this thin? Forget it. You're lucky you're cute. Hello there. What's up Charmaine? Care to join our brunch? There's plenty more bloody Jane where mine came from. Thanks, but I can't stay long. I just want to talk to the ladies for a second. Does that include me? Who are you? That's Leviathan. Didn't I tell you about my newest conquest on Sulani? You did. But I thought Leviathan was... A man. Yeah, keep rubbing it in. Long story. Anyway Charmaine, are you here about Studio Donna? I heard you are officially reopening today. Congratulations. That organization is a complete train wreck already, so at least you can't ruin it any more than the previous owner. Thanks, I guess. But we've been working hard to get the train back on track, and Serena and Evelyn are going for a much more modern approach than Prudence. Granted, we've lost a few members who preferred the old ways, but attracted new ones too. Today we celebrate the rebirth of Studio Donna, and you're all invited. The ladies among you that is. I still don't know if this includes me or not. Tell me about it, I almost never get included in anything, just because I'm a dog. But dogs have feelings too, you know? And gender identities. Do you wish to be included among the ladies Lev? No. Then you stay at home, it's as simple as that. We'll find other ways to keep ourselves busy while the ladies are out. We always do, right? Good thing I won't be here for it. Oh, Nate is free today because his girlfriend is coming to the reopening too, and Loki could use some distraction from his work as the magic community's vampire ambassador. He's been doing nothing else since you came back from that mountain. Boys night out anyone? I'm not sure if that includes me either, at least not right now. You'll figure it out. I have to go now, make some final preparations. See you. She's right, I guess I should pay Nate a visit. We haven't really talked since he and Esper moved in together. What about you Grande, are you up for a trip to Shadow Vale? Sure. As long as we don't play around with unfamiliar magic again, because I've had my fair share of it recently. Enjoy your boys night out. Just remember to be back before the actual night, if you still wish to be cured of your atheism. And we're going to Studio Donna in the meantime? Why not? 
I have no other plans for the afternoon, other than maybe stealing a relic from Vero, but we can do that before we meet up with the Pope Escals. Makes you wonder what exactly happened to Vero though, doesn't it? Somebody help me. What? What happened here? Is anyone out there? I'm trapped in the plane. Please get me out. But I... I don't know how. Are you a witch or not? Use your magic powers. How did you... Wait. You're right. Thank you. My name is Vero. What's yours? I'm... Oh no. I'm so sorry. I couldn't help them. They were already dead when I woke up. Are these your parents? No, but they're probably dead too. And now it's after me. What is? The thing that crashed our plane in the first place. Don't you hear that sound? I can only hear the rain. Where the hell are we anyway? Hell sounds about right. This place is full of evil spirits. Oh god, they're coming. Wait. So, do you really think they're going to turn this thing around? We all know what a hypocritical judgmental bitch Prudence was. No offense, bitch. She's not even here. Right. But anyway, despite Prudence's flaws, she did know a thing or two about keeping up a professional facade when it mattered. And even though she practically raised Serena, that's the one thing she didn't impart on her, and now Serena is in charge of Studio Donna. The more I think about it, the less it seems like the progressive revolution everyone is talking about. So what exactly are we celebrating today? Serena may run the show, but she's not in charge. That would be Evelyn, whose husband inherited it, and Charmaine still has a say in the matter too, in case Serena goes wild. But I like to think she's grown a bit as a person after everything that happened. Speaking of Evelyn's husband. What the hell are you doing here? Get lost. The reopening celebration is for invited guests only. Which explains why you're out here, not in there. But since when does a man get to play bouncer at Studio Donna? Is it because you're so much like the previous owner, and Serena needs you as a living reminder not to turn out that way herself? Does it matter? We are invited guests. Now step aside. Or what? Are you going to turn me into a frog? Please, be my guest. Give me a legal reason to arrest you. Well you won't arrest anybody as a frog, so be careful what you wish for. But if it's any consolation, I never cared much for frogs anyway. I'm a garden gnome type of person. And I'm a cop, who takes the safety and well-being of his family very seriously. You'll slip up eventually, and then... Then you shut up. Thanks Elise. Saved by the family he's sworn to protect, because who knows what I would have done to this fucking moron if he hadn't stopped talking. I'm no longer part of Aaron's family as far as he's concerned. He threw me out of the house the moment we set foot in it again after Mount Como Rebbe. Can he do that? The family home in Newcrest is legally his property, and I was a subtenant, so yes, he can. But I still have my room at the Foxbury campus for now, and he can't prohibit me from seeing my sister. She invited me to this event. And Charmaine invited us. Let's not keep the respectable women of tomorrow waiting. No. Tell your boss I'm not his puppet, no matter how much older and wiser he thinks he is. We had an agreement, he either adheres to it or we're done. Okay, I'll tell him you're done. And then I'll help you find yourself a more respectful sugar daddy. Oh. Tiamo. Come in, it's open. Not keen on visitors these days, are you? I thought you were. Someone else. Sorry, but now is a bad time, especially for Grande. Not that there's ever a good time for a walking bloodbag in an underground city filled with vampires, but when they fight amongst themselves, no one is safe. Thanks. I wasn't feeling unsafe until you mentioned it. Charmaine mentioned your work as the vampire ambassador was getting tiresome. That bad? Nothing I can't handle. 
There's just this faction of vampires who don't like the idea of different occult species coexisting peacefully. They had no problem accepting Shadow Veil as a gift from the witches, but now they are plotting to take over the magic realm as well. Normally I'd just ignore them as long as it's all bark and no bite, but their leader claims to be older than the Ageless Sage, and promised me information about the fairies of Mount Comerabe in exchange for my help in furthering his agenda. And you actually considered it? Wow, five minutes of politician and you're already corrupt. Mum would be so proud. There was nothing shady about it, at least not initially, but he keeps trying to alter the agreement for his benefit, and I'm not having any of it. So much for my corruption. Yeah that sucks. How about you stop thinking about it for a few hours? We were on our way to Nate, just to hang out while our ladies are busy unturfing Studio Donna. Care to join in? I guess there's no harm in taking some time off, and I could really use it right now. Good. Because I wasn't going to leave your apartment without you by my side, after you just told me how dangerous this place has become for walking blood bags like me. Well what were you expecting? Vampires will be vampires. Are you okay Evelyn? Everything is going well so far, as you can see. Not a single sad face in the crowd, so, nothing to complain about. I wasn't asking about the event. How are you doing? Is Aaron giving you shit because of what happened last weekend? And what about Jaden and Daisy? That shouldn't be your concern. And I shouldn't be talking to you. Because your husband forbade it. Please Wilbika, just go enjoy the party. I still have work to do. The world wasn't created in one day either. Fascinating to see so many new faces here. This studio was hated by pretty much everyone who wasn't a member or a benefactor before you took over. What are you planning to do about its terrible reputation? For starters, expanding the audience. Officially, being female and having some kind of artistic hobby were the only requirements for joining in the past. But there were also a number of unspoken rules. Prudence wouldn't allow any members she knew were occults, atheists, or trans. Which makes it all the more astonishing that she tolerated me for as long as she did, given that I'm a mermaid, and even though I was raised Christian, I never took religion as seriously as my brother. I'm sure she had her own sinister motives for keeping you around. Or maybe that was her way of atoning for her role in my father's death. Maybe there was some good in her after all. Now we'll never know. Serena. I almost didn't recognize you with the new hair color, but it looks good on you. And thank you for inviting me to this event. Thank you for coming, Madam Mayor. We're not just reopening, but also reinventing ourselves, so it's time to bury the hatchet. It surprises me that I don't see your alien friend anywhere. Wasn't she the one who inspired you to do this? Among others, yes, but still Maria doesn't consider herself an artist. And I think she's sick too, at least her voice sounded rather deep and hoarse when we talked on the phone earlier. I can imagine why that is. But we'll take care of it later. Mayor Von Hinton has officially arrived at Studio Donna to celebrate its reopening with the new women in charge. Given her history with the previous owner who even attempted to replace her as the mayor of Windenburg, it remains to be seen whether or not this new alliance will stand the test of time. In other news... Sorry, the TV is too distracting. Why not leave it on, so that when you fail horribly, you can blame it on the distraction? That applies to all of you. Sounds like you're making up an excuse for yourself, because I won't fail. Your turn, Nate. Damn it. Oh well, you know what they say, unlucky at cards, lucky in love. So I take it Esper has forgiven you for turning her into a vampire without her knowledge or consent. Seems a little quick, especially since you also kept your own vampirism from her for the longest time. I'm going to keep hearing that for the rest of my existence, aren't I? Well it's still a sore spot, but she's beginning to appreciate all the perks that come with this new life, and making the best of it. I mean look at how she has rearranged the place. That was mostly her. This is my first time seeing the inside of this house, but considering who used to live here, I can only imagine how bland and boring it looked before. Must have taken at least a week to tear all the crucifixes off the walls. Fun fact, the one above the bed was hanging upside down when we moved in. 
Some might call it an accident, I call it an indication of where Miss Lacrosse's soul went after death, and we actually kept that particular crucifix as a reminder. Would you like to see it? Of course. What about you? Maybe later. You go ahead. Still strange to see Nate like this, so cheerful and relatively carefree. As you know, he was quite different in my time. Given that in your time, he was a grieving widower who had been stuck in an eternal winter for 100 years, I'd say he was doing pretty well. That kind of stress could easily have turned a weaker mind into a wraith. Good thing you'll no longer have to worry about that after tonight. But you're worried about the resurrection not working. No. A little afraid perhaps, but not worried. All I have to do is die, so Stel Maria and her brother-in-law can treat my body with that ancient cleansing potion to get rid of the wraith disease, and then Azriel's doll will revive me. It's not like I haven't died before. I'm a vampire after all, so I'm technically dead anyway, right? Then what else is bothering you? Why do you think something's bothering me at all? You haven't really talked to Nate since we got here, even though he's your best friend. Now you won't go upstairs to look at his room, and how you berated him for keeping certain secrets from his girlfriend. Certain secrets? You make it sound like it's no big deal. But then again why am I surprised? If my mother wasn't too old to have another child, I would probably assume you're my little half-brother from the future, because such an affinity for unnecessary secrecy must run in the family, and I'm fed up with it. So that's it. You recently found out about something she'd been keeping from you, and now you're angry with her. Am I angry? I don't even know. She made the right call after all, dumping my father after that argument. What bugs me is that she never told me about it. And you didn't tell Willbuka I assume. Because what child, no matter how old, would want to know that their father was willing to sacrifice them? I never mentioned what the argument was about, but of course you already knew. Well you told me yourself. In the future that is. And that's why I couldn't tell you. It might have created a paradox. Is it also a paradox when I say that, as much as I hate secrets, I kind of wish I had never found out about this one. If it's any consolation, tonight's resurrection might take care of that too. I told you Azriel's doll brings you back the way you were at the time the bond was formed. That includes memories, so chances are you'll forget about everything that happened between then and now. I can hardly wait. Little girl? Where are you? Listen, whatever you saw before, you can't just run away like that in the middle of the jungle. And what a jungle it is. Selva Dorada. God, I hate this place. Vera, run. No. Enough. I was a kid back then, now I'm an adult, and a powerful witch. Whatever is in this temple, I can handle it. But that little girl can't, so if she's in there, I have to find her. Fuck. No way I'm getting through this moon barrier. And there doesn't seem to be a crystal conveniently sticking out of the ground that we can remove to deactivate it. Vero is smarter than the angels. What now? Steal another relic from the Museum of Haunted History, as Grande suggested? Grande is a big boy, he can do that himself. This situation is just as much his fault as Leviathan's. Otherwise we just wait for Vero to return. She can't be gone forever. Which of these is the cleansing potion? The one on the right, but it only works on the dead. That's why you have to drink the other one. It will cause a fatal magic overload, preventing your spirit from leaving your body immediately while giving us enough time to administer the cleansing potion before the angel's doll revives you. Are you absolutely sure about this, Kata Lin? Will he feel any pain? <laughs> Sorry, I know this is serious, but I just can't get over the fact that you two switched sexes. Too bad I'm probably going to forget this, so could you please stay like this until after I'm back from the dead? I'd like a good laugh when I wake up. If your mother doesn't show up with a skinwalker relic any time soon, the detransitions will have to wait a little longer anyway. Oh no. <laughs> Please tell me you're joking. <laughs> How could this even happen? There is no such thing as male and female aliens. We're a monogendered species, or an all-female one from a human perspective. The spell shouldn't have affected me like this. 
But then again, I'm only half alien and half human, so maybe that's why. I don't know about that Stelmaria, but to answer your other question, I spent the last week brewing and perfecting these potions. So yes, I'm sure they'll both work as intended. Then let's get it over with. Cheers. Are we late? Has the resurrection begun yet? I don't know. Bitch and I were sent downstairs to keep watch in case the rest of Stelmaria's family comes home early. Nobody else is supposed to know about this. And they totally won't get suspicious when they see some other witch's dog familiar chilling in the living room with a very tall stranger they've never seen before. Awesome plan. That must have been the magic overload. Perhaps we did something wrong. Shouldn't he be waking up by now? His spirit probably hasn't been able to leave his body yet, and the doll will only revive him when that happens. We just have to wait. How can you stay so calm? Doesn't Tiyamo mean anything to you? More than you will ever know. But I know this will work. If you can't trust me, trust your brother-in-law and his alchemy skills. It's good he hasn't woken up yet. The cleansing potion needs time to cure his body of all disease. I've never been in this room before. Is this where you sleep, Stel Marcus? And where is my son? What do you mean? He's right there, on my... Um... Tiamo? Yes, male-looking Stel Maria. It worked. It's so good to see you. And you kind of look like Lev, but... What happened, and how did we get here anyway? Just a second ago we were still in the Eastern Highlands. He has forgotten everything since then, as expected, but apart from that he's alive and well. Everything is fine. As long as we can keep him from eating any more forbidden fruit. Hey little girl. Wake up, quickly. We have to get out of here. Too late. I'm dead. Well, almost. The evil spirits have found me. And now, I'm going to be sacrificed. Sacrificed? Why? To whom? No idea. But as I said, it's too late for me. It's not. I'm a necromancer. I can resurrect your body. Then please, do what you can. Before the evil spirits return. I'm, I'm so, so scared. scared. Please, please save me, Vera. You're the only one who can. 